Hey y'all, it's Dream for the Yokos Girl. And as you can see, we're standing out here in the backyard. That's because in today's video, we are gonna discuss spider mites and pests in the gardens and how what I'm dealing with and how I'm gonna continue to move forward and deal with it. So if you all are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, I am so glad to see you again. Let's get growing, y'all. Okay, so if you all follow me over on TikTok, you've been seeing the situation with spider mites. If you watched, and I'll link it at the end of this video, if you watch the garden tour, I actually talk about all the pests that I've dealt with, and I've been able to win the battle with all of them, except for one, and that is spider mites. And so, first let me tell you what I did, and then I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to try and eliminate them and to move forward. So, originally, when they all started moving in on the fruit trees, we got them off of the fruit trees really quickly. Um, we got praying mantis for um, the baby cat, baby caterpillars, the baby grasshoppers. And once those got big enough, they eliminated all the grasshoppers. We don't have hardly any in the yard anymore, which we're thankful for, because they did some pretty, pretty extensive damage on the leaves of the plum trees and um, the raspberry and the blackberry and uh, the hibiscus over here. Sorry, there's a lot going on around me. <laughs> I'm so losing track of what I'm saying. So we got them off of there really fast and then we started noticing them in the front and we got those off of there really fast. But over here in this tomato garden, and I think it was because we let it kind of grow more like a bush over here. It's just something we've always done. We've never had a problem with doing it. We do kind of keep the branches clipped around in the inside to kind of give it air so it has airflow. But they got really bad. And so we made the decision, um, it's been three and a half weeks ago now, to start to spray Captain Jack's dead bug on this back here. And I, y'all, it was like I sprayed miracle Grow on them because it's like, as soon as I did that they just exploded so everything I read said you gotta you know you gotta spray again because the adults died and now the babies have hatched and you need to spray again because spider mites as an adult once they lay an egg that egg hatches it has 28 days before it's an adult again so they multiply super fast plus we have all of this wind going on so that's how they're getting spread all over the yard they float in the wind, they land on something, and they create a new colony. So that's why they're everywhere instead of just in one spot. So I waited the week and I sprayed again, and that seemed to kind of bring it under control. So I thought, okay, this next week I'll get the ladybugs because I watched several YouTubers and one of them who I, it's um, Ripe Tomatoes, is, I think is the name of his YouTube channel, and I'll link it below, but he's extremely, well versed and knowledge in different kinds of things so <laughs> sorry for the interruption as I was saying he's extremely knowledgeable in soil and being able to fight different kinds of pests so I watched his channel and you know he talked about sprays and everything and then he talked about ladybugs why well, I'd already done the sprays by the time I watched the video so I went after ladybugs and you can see that footage right here Okay, you all, I just wanted to capture this for those who may have never let ladybugs go before. These are our two canisters of ladybugs. Not sure exactly how many are in there, but there is quite a bit. And then over here on my, sorry for the fast movement, over here on the plate is about a handful of cotton balls and I've wet them down and that's so that they can get a good drink when they come out of here because they're they're going to be very thirsty when they come out. So I just wanted to document what I was doing for those of you who have never done it. And I'm going to set the camera over here and we're going to let them go. Okay, you all can see they are very, very active and they're going to get out of there quick. I got one on my hand. They're going to come out pretty quick. They're pretty hungry. So the goal is for them to get up and into the garden so that uh, they can start having dinner on these spider mites. So 
the day after releasing the ladybugs, um, you know, the first day, everything appeared to be working. They climbed up the branches and you can tell they were sitting on these branches and they appeared to be eating something, which was, we released them late in the evening. Um, by the next morning, they were all gone. And then I filmed the garden tour and I talk about all the issues I've been facing and I had to make some serious decisions. So these are the decisions that I made. If it's a determinant, I am going to remove all the branches and any fruit that's left on there, we'll let them ripen on the branch take the fruit off and get rid of the the plant because the determinant at this point most of them are as big as they're going to get and they're probably pretty close to being done producing with this heat that we have and so with the determinants that i had up front after the first time that i sprayed them we got that under control pretty quick especially once we removed um, the leaves after the second spraying uh, which were a week apart from each other and so what i did with them I'm going to now do with these back here because these are more infested than the things that are up front. But what I did with those is I did just like I just did with these. I sprayed everything, removed the dead branches because they're pointless at this point. They're not doing any work for the plant. They're just taking nutrients away from the, the existing branches that are there that are healthy and you just, it's just better for your plant altogether. And so I heavily fed them. First I put a slow release fertilizer down. I also put blood meal down and I put bone meal down. And then at the base of each plant, I took liquid fish emulsion. And when I say I watered them every other day, it with the fish emulsion, I'm not telling you that I, I heavily watered them. I just poured it, counted one, two, three, four, five, and moved on to the next plant. And they have bounced back and i'll show you footage of that here in just a minute but they have bounced back and they're beautifully green on the bottom and they're nice and bushy and they're they're starting to come back so my hope is with these indeterminates we will have the same response so i yesterday this is what i've done this is what i've decided to do and what i'm doing as i move forward with these yesterday um after some advice from a fellow tiktoker she said to take a high powered hose and spray the crap out of the the plant she said because they like dry heat they don't like humidity and she said take advantage of this cooler weather that we're having here in texas so i did i got in there and i on the highest power of the jet of my watering thing and i sprayed them all down then i waited till last night and at the advice of one of my subscribers about neem oil and chastel soap mixture she said i'm in fort worth i understand your pain i'm doing the same thing try this and so i went and got that stuff yesterday and last night i sprayed them again and I sprayed them with that late last night. So this morning what I'm doing is removing all of the dead branches because again, they're dead. They're crispy brown. They're, they're not serving any healthy purpose to the existing plant. So we're gonna get those out of there. We're going to feed them and I've ordered the mites, um, the predatorial mites. So once they get here, which probably won't be for a few more days, once they get here, we are going to release them in the yard to finish off all of the spider mites because that's what we're going to do moving forward so let me show you what everything looks like okay well, i wanted to show you the damage that spider mites do to your plants the unfortunate thing about spider mites is you don't know you have them until you got a problem and when you're someone who pretty much refuses to spray that can be a lengthy process to eliminate them but i want to show you what it looks like when they get a hold of everything okay if i'm in the shadow i apologize but it's really sunny um, even though the temperatures have dropped but you can see so i want to get up close to you to these plants um, for those of you who don't know what spider mites what the infestation looks like when it starts. So the first signs you're gonna see is this dappling, trying to get out of the sun, the dappling of the leaf. And you won't see any webbing until the colony has gotten pretty extensive. Um, and that's when you start seeing the webbing. So my first plan of action was to come out here and always kind of remove these and put them in um, some soapy water in a bucket but as you can see it's not worked so we want to be able to get as much fruit off this plant as we can 
all right let me show you what's going on over here you can see that I've been trimming off but here look the plant is dead that serves no purpose to this plant so we are going to heavily heavily get that off of there now let me show you the the other plants Our plants I don't know hi baby boy I don't know if you guys can see that if I can get close enough and it'll focus in on it but these guys are pretty much dead so we are going to completely eliminate them so be careful well you're stepping on things be careful so we're gonna completely eliminate them and then you can see what's going on back here and so we got to get these are our summer uh, heat tolerant tomatoes and of course I still haven't picked that up from the dog but you can see what they're doing and we got to get that taken care of okay y'all I made it out to the front I wanted to show you what I meant by the plants bouncing back after being fertilized you can see how full they are down there on almost every plant with the exception of a couple of them and then if you pan back you can see how green that they've gotten on top and that's just because I started fertilizing them at the base like I said every other day and I did that for a week okay you all so that's what I'm dealing with here in the gardens and I just wanted to bring I, I always want to as a gardener I always want to be as, as transparent as I can with everybody you know those beautiful gardens are beautiful gardens but all beautiful gardens have pests and all beautiful gardens have problems and I think those things need to be shared you know I don't use things like diatomaceous earth um, you know it doesn't matter if it's an organic or it's a synthetic it is designed to kill and it doesn't matter what it comes in contact with whether that be a beneficial bug or a beneficial pollinator or the opposite um, if it comes in contact with it it's going to probably kill it and that's the last thing I want to do so I don't use diatomaceous earth for those of you who might be wondering um, I just don't I found one year I, I had cucumber beetles and someone said hey use diatomaceous earth well I also happen to have a beehive that year and the bees doing what bees do and me not knowing a lot about diatomaceous earth and taking this person's <laughs> advice and thinking that they knew wholeheartedly what they were talking about and they probably you know they didn't mean it maliciously but what happened from that is I killed an entire colony of bees and so since that day I or that that garden season uh, I have sworn off using any kind of diatomaceous earth um, but those are the issues I'm facing in this garden and I hope that you found some kind of value out of this I hope that if you're facing these issues in your own gardens that it was helpful in some way to know that you're not alone especially if you are in Texas oh my goodness everybody in Texas is having this issue did you hear that little guy words of wisdom down there if you are new here don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button because new videos are posted often and I would hate for you to miss anything till I see you in the next video updates will come in the form of shorts on the channel so be on the lookout and if you hit the notification button you'll get to see those when they come out until I see you in the next video you all take care of yourselves more importantly you keep your heads up and no matter how you do it no matter what is going on, no matter how many struggles you are having, remember this one thing. You are not failing. Failures are opportunities waiting in the shadows for you to pick them up. You all keep growing. Bye-bye.